So the Redmi Note 7 was one of the most hyped Xiaomi phones like the Poco F1. And as we wrote in our launch article, the Redmi Note 7 made an impact to the mid-range market similar to what the Poco F1 did to the flagship market. But after using this phone for a while, I think that it is not as revolutionary as the Poco F1. But at this price tag, you'll be hard pressed to find a better phone than this one. So let's find out why. So first, let's start with the build quality and design. Well, I won't use many other words to describe it other than bland because it is a large, big, flat slab of glass. And it is clear that Sami didn't spend too much time over the design of the Note 7 because it has a pretty generic design with a simple water drop notch and a large chin. But does it look bad? No, it just looks simple, but it gets the job done of looking and feeling premium. So the build quality is fine, it does not feel exquisite on the hand, but it does not feel flimsy either. So I did notice that it feels heavier than the phone from the comparisons like the Honor 10 Lite, but you won't notice this when you use this phone on a day-to-day -day basis. Only when you compare your phone to another, you'll feel that difference in the way. Now, there's only so much we can talk about the design of the phone. What makes people really stick to a smartphone is what's inside the phone. So the Redmi Note 7 has an Full HD Plus 19.5 is to 9 aspect ratio screen and this is an IPS LCD panel which does not have the same punchy colors as an AMOLED display but it gets adequately bright to be viewed in direct sunlight. So the panel is of high quality and I enjoyed watching YouTube on this device. I have no complaint to the display on this phone. Now while we are talking about watching YouTube, the speaker on the Note 7 is good as well. It is not as loud as I wanted it to be but it is clear and does not distort even at the highest volume. So now it's about time that we talk about the performance of the phone but before that let's just talk about the general experience of using this phone. So the biometrics on this device are super fast, the fingerprint sensor unlocks the phone instantaneously but it is weird that Xiaomi does not offer the option to unlock the phone using your face. But face ID isn't that secure anyway so I don't miss it that much. So on overall the phone is snappy, the apps open and close fast, the animations are fluid and simple and there were not any lags or stutter anywhere. And that's impressive because Xiaomi has a overlay on top of Android 9.05 and the main component of this UI that I like is this notification set. It's like a lob style of Android notifications and iOS notifications and it looks pretty good and well managed. And also, I like this brightness slider and I would like to see this in more Android phones. Now another cool feature is that this battery notification on the lock screen that shows your last charge time and battery drain percentage. So there is no app drawer here, every app is some horizontal swipes away from your home screen and I wish that apps were organized better. You may or may not like the setup, it depends on your preference and your experience. If you have used Xiaomi phones in the past, you'll feel right at home and even though I prefer a cleaner Android software, I like what Xiaomi has done here. It has built a unique Xiaomi experience with the Mi UI 10 without making the phone feel like it's bloated. Well, there are many pre-installed apps that the normal users who aren't tech savvy will like. For example, there are files, notes, browser, music, calendar, and even more useful apps inside the tools folder. I don't normally see this many useful apps pre-installed on the phone, and though many other companies may include some of these apps in their phone, Xiaomi has used the same design language in every one of these apps. And this makes using these apps regularly much more enjoyable. It's similar to what Apple does with their pre-installed apps on iPhones. So that concludes what I have to say about the UI of this phone. Now, let's move on to some games. So if you ask me how's the gaming on this phone, it's as expected from Xiaomi phones with a Snapdragon 660. So we have seen Xiaomi use this chipset on some of the other phones like the Xiaomi Mi A2 and the Xiaomi Mi A Lite and the performance is very similar. I enjoyed playing PUBG in medium settings on this phone. There were one or two lags in a 40 minute game but it didn't affect my experience that much. Also played Aldo's Odyssey and it ran without any problems. So if you don't want the highest frame rates and highest graphics settings, Redmi Note 7 will serve you well with your gaming needs. Now as we're talking about gaming, let's talk about one of the most important aspects of gaming that is not performance, the battery life. So the battery life on the Redmi Note 7 is not spectacular but it is pretty good because it will last you a full day pretty easily but if you're not an avid user of a smartphone, it will even last you more than a day. And now talking about charging speeds, the stock charger that comes in the box is a 10 watt charger and will give you around 30% of charge in 30 minutes but it does support quick charge 4 as well which will give you a quicker charge time. And with the stock charger, it will take around 2 hours or 1 hour and 50 minutes for a full charge. Which is not that great, but it is pretty good as well, I guess. Now finally, let's talk about the cameras. I guess most of you guys watching this video know that the Xiaomi Redmi Note 7 has a full head Megapixel camera. That alone has intrigued many of you regarding this phone. But what you'll have to understand before you buy this phone is that it does not produce full head Megapixel images. The sensor is a footed megapixel sensor but it uses pixel bending technology to produce 12 megapixel images. So the resulting image is a 12 megapixel only. 
you won't get a 48 megapixel image. But whatever the resolution, I must admit that this camera takes good pictures for the price. It does not produce images with extreme saturation like the Honor 10 Lite. The colors are true to life as you can see with the images of these two flowers. The green leaves are also not comically saturated. Now this camera is good at capturing dynamic greens. I mean look at this photo of Mahi Devi Temple. The right half of this photo is in shadows. But if you zoom in between the legs of the deity at the center, you can figure out the face of the person sitting there easily. And the structure of the temple at the right side is still clearly visible even when you zoom in. However, the clouds above this come out a little fuzzy. But on overall, this is a pretty good image and details have been switched up really well. Now while using this camera, I found out one neat trick. If you want the best shot possible and there aren't any moving subjects, you should try taking your photos with the night mode on. Yes, this phone has night mode built in and it is very useful at day or night. Take a look at what kind of picture night mode produces. This photo has more contrast and better dynamic range than the previous photo of the temple. The clouds are better defined, but of course, you'll have to wait about 2 seconds after you press the shutter button to get your photo clicked. Now, as we were talking about night mode, the Redmi Note 7 impressed me with its nighttime photo capabilities. The images aren't as good as something coming out of S10 or the P30 Pro, but they are good for a phone that costs quite off one lot. Here is a camera sample of street lit with street lights. Well, this image looks pretty good by itself, but take a look at what using the night mode brings to the table. Did you notice the buildings at the back of the previous photo? Yeah, they are much more noticeable in this photo. Now let's take a look at the another pair of photos. This is a picture of the front stall at the Kathmandu Mall. The images to the left is the one shot without night mode. It looks good in itself, but the images on the right blows it out of the water. The yellow light on top stall is better contained in the right photo, and there is more detail at the top at the bottom of the photo on the right photo than the, on the left one. And same goes with the tree as well. So night mode really does make a difference here. If you don't have any moving subjects, you should try clicking photos with the night mode on, always. So not many smartphones can offer what the Redmi Note 7 offers at its price tag. One of the competitions is the Honor 10 Lite and another could be Samsung Galaxy A30. But if you look at the sheer specs and performance, this thing is unbeatable at this price tag. So that's it for this video. Hope you guys liked it. And as always, like if you liked it, subscribe to our channel for more content like this. Also hit that bell icon to get notifications. Until next time, Namaste.